Lift a person up when they might be down. Teach people about the goodness of our Lord Jesus so they can walk in a gift of thanksgiving. Is it always easy to be thankful? No. It's hard. When life's got you all beat down and you're in the hospital and you're dealing with health issues, it's hard to be thankful. It's hard to understand that this is what I got to deal with. One thing I realized this week, first signs of getting old. <laughs> when you sit down and you go, oh. I do that now. I didn't use to. In everything we do, give thanks. Being thankful is actually a gift from God. Did you know that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tossed into a fiery furnace. Placed back in a little corner of all these fiery flames. Thousands and thousands of degrees of heat. And the next morning when they opened the door, they walked out. Hello. And I can just imagine what they were doing in that furnace. God sent an angel down and blocked the heat from them. They were singing and glorifying God and being thankful. Thankful. Thanksgiving is a gift. When we can walk above our circumstances, we can't do that on our own, guys. That's what God does for us. His Holy Spirit comes into our lives and touches our hearts and cleans our minds so we can actually walk above everything that's happening around us. It's a gift. It's something special from God. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23 on page 827 tells us this. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance, in the saints and his comparable great power for us who believe. The power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things, all things, my favorite word, say that, all things, God placed all things, where? <coughs> Under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Wow. Everything in every way. <laughs> the fullness of Jesus. Shouldn't this be obvious to us? How many of you have had something happen in your life that just blew you away? You go, wow, God loves me that much. Of you. you ever had that happen in your life? And how quick do we forget? How quick do we? Oh, yeah, I remember now. 
I remember that. Many of God's great attributes, his awesome and loving deeds, pass in one ear and right out the other. Oh, we're happy for a time. I can tell you stories of Kristen. How the doctors told us she would never be right. They were right, no. <laughs> doctors pulled Debbie and I in for what they called genetic counseling and told us we should do this and do that. And I entertained those conversations. You see, I hate going to Cedar Point and seeing a child in a wheelchair. I hate being around folks who don't have what I have. It saddens my heart so much that it almost makes me sad. Friday night we had folks over. They've pastored churches and we were talking about things and the wife said to me, she says, you can't let the church get you down. You can't let people get you down. Well, how do you not do that, guys? When you love folks and you want to see them do well, and sometimes I know I feel like a cheerleader, but God is so good and He has so much for each and every one of us. He's placed all things under his feet. And guess what? He's given them to you and me. Gracious gifts from God. I pray that the Holy Spirit can remove the scales from our eyes so we can recognize and be thankful for things God provides us. Good things wholesome things. We've experienced life, a lot of us. We've had ups and we've had downs. But you know what's most important? That we never forget to glorify God, to sing songs of praises unto Him, to just do what the Bible has asked us to do. And that's to be a light in a world that's dark. And we can't do that here, guys. We can't do that here. We need to go. We need to take these little tidbits of information, clean the scales, not let it just go in and out, but let her take seat for a little bit and think about it. And then when we leave this place, be an example of someone who loves Christ. Be an example in your daily walk. Be an example when you don't feel like it. Be quick to apologize. Show love and compassion to your fellow man. Because they might not ever see it if it don't come from Brenda this morning said she wasn't sure about church. She wasn't raised that way. But Mike was an example in her heart and in her life and helped her change into knowing Jesus and the goodness of him. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this series. Thank you for us being thankful unto you, Lord. Allow us to continue to sing praises to you, Father God. To lift our voices together. To magnify and glorify the greatness of who you are. Father God, I pray this day that you'll be with those who stay for Sunday school. That the class there will be enlightening and encouraging. And Father God, I pray that those who leave, Father God, that this sermon, just a little nugget, will take seat in their minds. And they'll leave an ex as an example of who you are and how you've changed our lives. 
Father God, this morning, if someone's struggling with that idea or that thought, give them the courage to pull somebody aside before they leave and pray with them this morning. Father God, again, we thank you for family. We thank you for the church. We thank you for the town of Alverton, Lord. And we thank you, God, for who you are. Now guide and direct us as we leave this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are dismissed, guys.